Welcome to Designer Digital's bi-weekly tip, April 20th, 2018. This week, frame it like Trace, creating a cutout page frame in Photoshop and Elements. Browsing the idea gallery at Designer Digital's gives me all kinds of creative inspiration. I literally ooh and ah while I'm admiring the beautiful pages there. Recently, I was blown away by this page. It's called This Face by Tracy, Tracer Majig. I was drawn to the way that she cut the heart from a piece of cardstock and then used it to frame her grouping of photos on the right side of the page. It's such a wonderful technique. I love the way her brain works. Here's how to get that look on your own project. Begin by opening two coordinating pieces of paper. Trace used Botanical Colors Pink number 8 and Simply Moroccan 4 paper number 9. So I'll go ahead and open those two in Photoshop. Get the Move tool, which is the first tool up at the top, and drag one paper on top of the other paper. If you hold your Shift key as you click and drag, it'll center the paper on the new document. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the top paper, since I already have it dragged over on top of the other paper. I'm going to go ahead and undock this and open up a mask. Trace used heart number 8 from the Clean Stitch Hearts Pink number 1 set by Katie Pertit. But really any mask or shape will work with this technique, so choose a shape that coordinates with the theme of your own project. Using the Move tool, drag the shape over onto that stacked document that you made in the last step. And then I'll close out the mask. Now at this point I need to enlarge this mask quite a bit. And so to do that, go to the corner of the mask layer and you'll see that the arrow changes to a diagonal arrow. So hold the shift key and click and drag. And Trace made this quite large, so I'll drag out quite a bit. And then position the mask over on the corner so that it's hanging off of the page. Next, tilt the mask by moving the cursor outside one corner of the mask. When the cursor changes to a curved arrow, you can click and drag that corner to twist your mask layer. Alright, next we want to select the mask. So control click or on a Mac system command click the thumbnail of the mask layer over in the layers panel. You have to control click or command click on that little picture of the mask. This selects just the mask and you'll see marching ants that surround it to let you know that it's selected. Next click the top paper. So it's actually the middle layer now but it was the paper that you put on top of the other paper. And press delete or backspace on your keyboard. Then press Ctrl D or on a Mac system Command D to remove the selection. Hide the mask layer by clicking the layer visibility icon that looks like a little eyeball on the left side of the mask layer. Now you'll begin to see the shape cut out from the top paper so that you can see the bottom paper peeking through. Add a drop shadow to the top layer. I find it easiest to use Katie Pertit's Drop Shadow Styles, number one or number two. I'm going to use the Lifting Shadow so that you can see clearly how the cutout looks. Finish the page by clicking the background layer. Now what you'll want to do is drag photos, papers, and embellishments between the background and the cutout paper to fill that shape. So I'll go to the curated studio mix number 25 and drag some embellishments over onto the page. And I'll click to say that I want to add them. And then you just drag them here between the two layers. And kind of overlap, twist, turn, do what you need to do to make it work. Tracy layered paper strips, torn paper, ribbons, a photo, and embellishments really artfully on her page. It is a delightful effect. Finally, add a title and journaling above the cutout paper layer to complete the project. 
Thanks for the inspiration, Trace. Your page is an amazing visual confection. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to check back in two weeks for the next Designer Digitals tip.